Hey everybody, how is it going? Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to revisit Sensionix, ticker symbol S-E-N-S. -E I did a video on this company many months ago, and even though I don't own any of their stock, I continue to watch them from afar, and their stock is actually performing very well compared to a lot of other stocks that were hot during the time that Sensionix went on its run. Um, if you haven't heard of Sensionix before, they have a state-of-the-art diabetes management system. Uh, management technology, I should say. And if we go jump over this other page, we can see that their EverSense CGM system provides continuous glucose monitoring for up to 90 days via an under the skin sensor, a removable and rechargeable smart transmitter, and a convenient app for real time diabetes monitoring and management. And actually, let me just play this video right here just so you can get a better idea of their technology before I jump on to some of their other numbers and uh, take, take a look at how the company is performing since that my last video. The 90-day Eversense Continuous Glucose Monitoring System is the first and only subcutaneous FDA-approved CGM system to feature a sensor that measures glucose levels for up to 90 days in adults 18 years and older, a removable and rechargeable smart transmitter with on-body vibe alerts, and a mobile app for long-term and continuous monitoring. A tiny sensor is placed under the skin in the upper arm by a healthcare provider in a brief in-office procedure. A gentle, daily-use, double-sided adhesive patch secures the Eversense transmitter to the skin. The transmitter is water-resistant and can be removed and reapplied at any time. The transmitter powers the sensor's electronics wirelessly. Electronics inside the sensor communicate the raw data to the transmitter every five minutes. The smart transmitter calculates the glucose concentration from the sensor's signals and quickly provides on-body vibratory alerts to warn the user of impending or current hypo or hyperglycemic events. The transmitter also communicates the glucose readings to the user's mobile device via Bluetooth. The app stores data in a secure cloud server, enabling patients to allow family members or caregivers to remotely view the glucose readings and alerts from their own mobile devices. 90 Day Eversense, the first subcutaneous sensor and the only CGM system that provides on-body vibe alerts and long-term monitoring to quickly detect and predict episodes of hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. 90 Days Unstoppable. All right, so as you can see, that technology is rather interesting, and this wouldn't surprise me one bit. If this becomes the standard in uh, diabetes management over the coming years, so uh, that's one of the reasons I have been very interested in keeping an eye on this company. But let's check in on some of their numbers since my last video. All right, well, jumping over here to Seeking Alpha, we can see that Sensionix is trading at $3.72. And I believe my first video on Sensionix was on February the 16th. And um, I think that was the top in the stock. It was trading well over $5 a share. But usually when um, stocks show up on my radar is when they are getting pretty close to a top. You know, that's when they're kind of in the news. And um, I very seldom chase those stocks. I just, you know, use that time to kind of get familiar with the stock and uh, do a little bit of research and when the price comes down after it's been running that's when I consider buying you know, I was hoping that Sensionix was going to fall farther than it has but uh, it hasn't and um, and I've been patiently waiting but it is not cooperating so it's at the it's at it's at the point of the price chart where um you know, if you do want to own some shares of Sensionix, we're probably not going to get a chance to get in any cheaper unless uh, some horrible news comes out. But we'll get into the charts in a minute. But looking at some of these other numbers, we can see the short interest is up to 26%. And normally I don't pay attention to short interest uh, all that much. I know it's all the rage to talk about lately, but I mean, that is a pretty high number. So that could lead to uh, an explosive move to the upside. Uh, but we can see the market cap is still at one point. 65 billion so that's kind of surprising that it's hanging out at such a high market cap um, even though some of these companies that are cash burning and uh, not profitable are getting absolutely shredded but Sensionix is holding up 
pretty darn well. But let's take a look at their revenue numbers. Um, we can see that their revenues are expected to come in at just over 30 million this year. Last year, uh, they came in right around, or at least the estimate says, right around a 13 and a half million. So it's still a pretty good jump. The company still is expected to grow. And with that kind of technology, you know, I would expect them to be growing unless something comes out better. But I haven't seen anything better as far as diabetes management goes. But um, we can see that their earnings per share is headed in the right direction. Um, they are not supposed to be earnings per share positive this year, but potentially next year. I think there's a very good possibility they could beat this estimate right here because we can see sales are expected to almost double year over year from 22 to 23. So um, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they can become EPS profitable in 2023. But let's go down and take a look at some of their uh, debt numbers. You can see their debt is at 63 million and their cash as a, is at 142 million. So that is always a good thing uh, when they have more cash on hand than they have total debt. And if we look at their ownership, we can see institutions actually own 26% uh, of the stock. And that's kind of unusual for a stock that is trading as low as it is. So that is a good sign. Um, I would like to see management own a little bit more than uh, 5.7%, but that is definitely a respectable number. And then, of course, you would expect with this with a stock this cheap uh, for the public to be owning a majority of the shares. But um, all in all, I think the numbers still look pretty darn good for um you know, Sensionics. It's a little worrying for me that um, they're only expected to have about 30 million in revenue, but they have a market cap of 1.65 billion, but the stock is holding up pretty well. So, um, you know, it is what it is, but let's get into the charts. All right, we're well, getting over here to my TC2000 software. We can see I have the daily chart for Sensionix Holdings up. And after I get done with Sensionix Holdings, I'm going to get into the trade my trading activity for the day. But before I get into any of this, please remember I am not a financial advisor. All of this is just my opinion for entertainment purposes only. Please make all of your own trading decisions. Now, with that being said, I actually do have a small trading group. Um, it, the link is in the description. It's only $9.99 a month if you would like to join my Patreon and be a part of that. Um, I, try to, I try to do a pre-market watch list video before every single trading day just to show you what I am looking at and if I see anything else interesting going on in the market. And I'm also in the Discord every single day. So if that interests you, that link is down there. And if also, if you don't mind supporting the channel with a like, I would appreciate that as well. But getting into this Sensionic chart, uh, I did find it was interesting when I looked at my first video on Sensionics that I actually made it on February the 16th. So it was this green day right here. It actually made it just a little bit higher the next day, but had an immediate reversal. So uh, it was basically the top in the market. And um, usually when everybody becomes aware of a stock, is it's usually uh, getting close to a top in the market. So when I see something like that going on, uh, like I was talking about earlier, I very, very rarely buy, and I certainly don't want to hold on for too long if I do, because you can usually uh, get a better price. Now, I looked when I did my second video, and I think it was right down here. Um, I think it was on the 26th of April, and uh, that was actually pretty close to the bottom in the stock when it pulled back. I mean, it didn't quite make it there. I thought it was actually going to fall further. But uh, it didn't. You know, Sensionix has been holding up very well. If you've been watching any of the stocks that have been burning at cash that are not profitable, a lot of them topped out in February of last year and have just been fading down into the abyss. And I am holding on to a couple of them that I believe in for the long term. So uh, believe me, I have a couple of those myself. But um, getting into the current activity on Sensionix, we can see that Sensionix has gone pretty much parabolic. There's been uh, some higher than average volume coming into it. Now with this type of move that it's having right now, I would expect a pullback. You know, I expect something that looks kind of like this after this parabolic move. We'd have a pullback into these moving averages and then maybe another reactionary move up. But um, like I was saying before, I mean, Sensionix is just holding up super well. I think there's a lot of people that really believe in this company. I was actually hoping to get some of this stock um, well below a uh, dollar fifty a share because you know the valuation was still pretty high, you know, being well over a billion. But um, 
you know, it's just not fading down and it might not come down. With this price action, I would guess it's probably not going to come down and eventually it's going to be breaking this resistance level right here around uh, $4.15 or so. And if it can get above $4.15, which it's super close right now, and it hold above it, I mean, I think this thing has a fantastic chance of uh, taking out this previous high right around $5.50 because this stock has been clearly under accumulation. It's been going sideways for about eight or nine months when the rest of the high growth stocks that are burning through cash have just been fading into the abyss. So I think Sensi Onyx is very, very interesting here. I was really hoping to get some shares at a cheaper price. As for me, I'm probably just going to continue to watch this one. I'd rather not pay these higher prices, but you know, if I want to own some Sensi Onyx and I believe in their technology, which I do, um, I'm probably going to have, have to end up paying a higher price for Sensionics, but that's my take on Sensionics. I'll continue to watch this stock and, um, you know, do an update if I see anything else interesting going on with Sensionics. But um, let's get into my trading activity for the day. All right, well, getting into the first trade that I made today, this was a round trip trade, a day trade, and it was on MITQ, Moving Image Technologies Incorporated. I had never heard of this stock before, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just looking for stocks that are gapping up, and I try to do those gap and go trades. If you're not familiar with those are, it's usually something like this. You get the gap up. Let me see if I can draw this. Bear with me. And let me make a few other bars here just to represent what could happen and how I like to trade it. I look for one of two trading setups. And it's either something like this where it gaps up and it just continues to hold near the high. Let me see if I get these things to move. This software is kind of a pain in the butt. And then uh, once it breaks that high after it's made a ceiling, uh, I try to catch this move right here. And I try to buy on the breakout of that ceiling and just try to ride it up for about uh, between three and six percent usually sometimes a little bit more sometimes a little bit less depending on the price of the stock or in this case um, when a stock has a gap up and then starts coming down a bit i wait for it to let me see if i can get these things to work there's such a pain in my um, try to catch on to a moving average that is hooking up and then once it makes a little bit of a ceiling once it has the breakout above that geez louise once it gets the breakout above that um, that's when i like to buy it and that's what happened with this trade let me get this crap out of here and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about go to the one minute chart back it out here go to the very beginning of the day and as you can see, we had the gap up and the stock started to trade down. I wait for it to find some support at that eight period exponential moving average and make a little bit of a ceiling. As we can see, it was right there at $1.50. So I put in my order at $1.51, got executed right there and actually had my sell order in only for a $1.59. So I got about 6% on this one. Um, I took I took profit rather quickly because uh, stocks that trade under two dollars um, typically I don't have the best luck with them so it's kind of like a red flag I try to take profits rather quickly but you can see that there was more profit to be had MITQ went all the way up to about a dollar seventy four so uh, I guess I left a little bit on the table but all in all as a six percent gain so you know I will take that every single day but um, let's get into the next one. All right, well, before I actually get into the other one that I traded today, I just want to talk about IFBD. This one was also on my day trading watch list for my gap and go trades. And unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to get into this one. I had to leave the house at uh, 1030 because I had an appointment and this one just took too long to set up. And it actually uh, went through my buy price at uh, just as I was getting ready to walk out the door. But, you know, I removed that order because I wasn't going to be able to watch it. But just let me show you how this one was setting up real quick. So this one had a nice gap up in the morning. Let me situate a little bit better. Had a little bit of a multi-candle run, and then it rolled over, and then it started to make a little bit of a rounded bottom. As you can see, this one was really easy to see on the chart, and uh, it was making it right at $1.17. So I had my order in right here, right around $1.18. But, you know, it just kind of rolled over and continued to meander sideways until 1028. 
So if I would have uh, been able to keep my order in, that one would have been executed at 1028 and it made it all the way up to about a dollar 28 so that would have been more than my five to six percent uh, price target on these lower price stocks so this one probably would have been a winning trade as well but oh well that's how it goes sometimes but i just wanted to show you guys that one just to show you you know how easy these gap and go trading strategies can be to trade and usually i put my stop loss um, below the recent uh, floor as it's rounding up but as the price starts to move up i start to bring my trailing stop higher just to protect capital and um, that's just how I like to do these ones. And if you're not doing these gap and go trades and you're, you're uh, day trading, if you have that mentality where you like to day trade, um, you're kind of doing yourself a little bit of a disservice because these uh, tend to work just about every single day. It's a very high probability setup. But uh, let's actually get into the other trade that I made. All right, well, the last trade that I made today was on the TQQQ. I bought some call options on the T T TQQQ uh, yesterday uh, towards the end of the day. And the TQQQ, by the way, if you don't know, is the ultra bull for the QQQ, so for the NASDAQ. And the reason why I took this trade, I was actually looking at um, this consolidation right here, and I wanted to take a trade one way or the other because usually a breakout of a range like this is pretty strong even though this day really isn't all that strong but um, these options expire on Friday so if they uh, continue to move up they'll probably be worth quite a bit I actually bought these I bought the $62 call for 56 cents or $56 a contract and I sold half of them today at a dollar 78 I think the contract is uh, well over two dollars at the moment so I could have gotten more but I'm gonna hold on to the other half and hopefully um, we get some continuation towards this 200 period simple moving average and if that happens you know those options are going to be worth a heck of a lot more but it was nice to take um, half off the table at uh, you know more than triple what I paid for them but you know this trade was kind of more of a gamble because I wasn't sure which way it was going to go but the fact that the market had this sharp move up a pullback and then it could not break the low over the last four days I just had a feeling that this break was probably going to be towards the upside and I got lucky and it kind of worked out but you know this trade easily could have went either way but um, that was the other trade that I had on the day hopefully I'll keep my fingers crossed and uh, the TQQQ can make it up here to around the 200 day simple moving average before uh, the end of the week but that's all I have for this video if you guys have any questions please leave it for me down there in the comments section and I will get back to you as soon as I can um, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end and until next time take care everybody